crypto. Um, we'll set up our device or our sensor firewall. It's coming to devices and we'll go into device management. Okay, and here we have a device. We have this policy and come into edit and we'll see some of the details about this, uh, this firewall. Okay, here are my interfaces. So where we can configure our interfaces, IP address and everything, security zones, okay. This is where you can set up your routing. And you would be able to see the difference between the FDM and FMC. So here you can do OSPF version three as well. RIP, you can do PBR, BGP, you can do for both IPv4, IPv6, static routing. You can also do multicast routing, okay? So you get additional things when you are trying to configure um, a firewall using the FMC. The first tab here for device, we get to see some details about the firewall. What's the name, the mode. You can import, export, and download device configuration from here. The IPS engine or the inspection engine. Okay, we can see it's SNOP3. If you want, you can revert to SNOP2, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to revert this to SNOP2. Okay, so we are now at SNOT2. It basically gives us kind of like an information that upgrade to the new and improved SNOT, et cetera. Okay, so we'll, we'll switch this back uh, later on. We get some inventory details. What's the CPU, how many CPU cores, memory. Um, again, if this would have been a chassis, you would have get information about chassis, serial number, et cetera. Okay. Here we see our licenses, some health information. Okay, what's the status of health? What's the policy, health policy that it's being applied? Some system related configuration. Okay, what's the time zone version, time zone setting? Obviously, we have it set to UTC currently. We have only changed it on the FMC, not on a device, okay? So we'll have to do it on the device separately. We'll show you how to do it. Here's the management information, uh, information for the management interface. The status is up and management interface. At the bottom here, we can see what all policies are being used. So these are all the policies that you can possibly apply to your uh, firewall. Okay, we have an access control policy. This is the main policy. This is actually which defines what the firewall does. Okay, what traffic is allowed, what is not allowed, what traffic is trusted, monitored only, what traffic is sent to snort engine for deeper analysis, Okay, for that next generation firewall analysis and everything. Okay, and you have some of these additional policies and we will cover um, almost all of them. Okay, flex config I already discussed yesterday. Okay, you have QoS, self explanatory. It is used to configure the QoS settings. Okay, platform settings. This is where you can set some things on the firewall itself, things like DNS, NTP, a time. Um, banner, et cetera, okay? These are platform settings. So it's a completely separate policy. You do the NAT configuration through NAT policy. Identity is for your user awareness or user identity. DNS, this is used 
uh, for security intelligence. SSL, this is used for your TLS decryption. Tree filter is used to implement something that we call as a fast path. Okay, um, I'll explain that when we'll take a look at the um, traffic flow. Okay, and a lot of these policies, for example, NAT, QS platform flex. They are applied directly to the device or to the sensor. Okay. The other ones, which are pre filter, SSL, DNS, identity they are applied to the access control policy. And then the access control policy is applied to the sensor. Okay, so you define these individually, you configure them individually, you then apply them to an access control policy. In our case, this is what we created. By default, this is empty. And then you apply this access control policy to the sensor. These policies, they're applied directly to the sensor. Okay. <clears throat> All of these default policies, they are more or less empty by default. Okay, so you have a default pre-filter, default DNS, but they're empty basically. <clears throat> there are some advanced settings here. Never make any changes unless you know what you're doing or someone has asked you to make some changes, okay? One of the things with Firepower are some of the bypass settings. What happens if a packet is taking a lot of time for processing? Okay, so there are some of these automated bypass features. For example, in this case, okay, which basically says if a packet goes into snot, And it takes more than 3000 milliseconds for processing. Okay, it takes more than 3000 milliseconds for processing. We want to trigger traffic bypass or application bypass, which basically means the traffic will be allowed to go through the firewall without any inspection, which is to reduce performance latency on the network, congestion on the network, okay? If you're gonna notice, this is disabled by default, okay? So only enable this if you really know what you're doing, okay? There are some more bypass technologies are features within the uh, firepower and I discuss them one at a time. So this is AAB. Or this used to be called AAB, right now it's, it's called application bypass. Okay, there is something that's called as an IAB as well. Intelligent application bypass. We'll talk about later on what that is. There's also something that's called as a failed wire. FTW, which is the hardware bypass. With pre-filter, I said F uh, fast path. That is also a bypass feature. Okay, uh, when we cover more details, 
this access control policy has trust. We, we saw the trust action uh, in FBM as well. That is also, um, I like to call it a pseudo bypass. Okay, so there are lots of different bypass things which really serve some use cases, some purposes, which we will we'll discuss, okay? So this I've already discussed here for the AAB, okay? If a packet goes into the firewall, it needs to leave the firewall before this threshold. So typically a packet that enters the firewall, it takes maybe 100 to 200 milliseconds only. Okay, that's how fast the processing is. But for some reason, due to some process failure or could be any reason, a packet that entered the firewall, it was not processed properly and it did not leave the firewall and it hits this threshold of 3000 milliseconds, an automatic bypass is going to trigger. Okay, this is disabled by default, but that's really the use case for that. So when a packet enters, there's a timer that starts. When it exits the firewall, the timer is basically removed or reset and it's done on a per packet per flow basis. Now we are routing interfaces. There's something that's called as inline set. We'll talk about that, okay, um, later on. You can obviously set up uh, DHCP, just like we did on the um, FTM, okay. And we have something called as a VTAP, okay. Uh, this typically used kind of data center environments, okay. And we did not really see this on uh, FDM. Okay. So let's look at our topology once how this firewall is set up with the core switch. Okay. So um, the way that this is set up here, so if you're going to see here, we have a couple of VLANs. Okay. The management is in VLAN 100, our outside network here is in VLAN 200, okay? So we are keeping that traffic segmentation through these VLANs. And we have this DMZ here, which is in VLAN 150, okay? Now, the way that this, so this is the physical cabling, right? Logically, we have, let's say this HQ FTD1, This is a trunk, okay? And this would be uh, interface gig zero slash one. This is connected to my access switch, this guy here. And we have VLAN 110, VLAN 120, right? So this interface here, this is going to act as an SPI or a router on a stick, okay? So we are gonna create sub interfaces so that we can accommodate both the VLANs. There'll be a 802.1Q trunk, which will accommodate multiple VLANs, okay? The gig zero slash zero port is connected to this HQ edge router. Okay, and this is, providing us internet connectivity, okay? This is the uh, network here. And it's a triple homed firewall, which basically means we have three networks connected, okay? So gig zero zero, gig zero one, gig zero two is connected to my DMZ server cluster this guy here, okay? I mentioned the IP addressing everywhere. Uh, these VLANs are being accommodated here, 
on the HQ core switch. Okay. So for example, the GIG00 interface is connected to the AE00 interface. Okay. So uh, this E00 is in VLAN 200, just like I have configured here. Okay. So this is how the logical topology is. Okay. So let's take a look at the switch. Okay, let's just make sure everything is set up correctly here, which I don't think it is. So this gig zero zero, which will connect to my internet, it, this interface, it's connecting to E00 on the switch. Okay, so the E00 port, uh, it needs to be in VLAN 200. Okay, and we also have this redundant firewall, which we will configure later on, but the ports are configured or are connected as it is. So gig 0 in here connects to E10. So E00 and E10 are what is going to be connected to or in VLAN 200. Okay, 0, 01 and 11 are going to be trunks. Zero two and one two are going to be in VLAN 150. Okay, so the way that you tell that is how are the firewall ports connected to the switch ports? Okay, so I already told you gig zero zero is connected to internet, zero one is connected to inside, zero two is connected to DMZ. Okay, so you make a note of that on the switch and then place those switch ports appropriately in those VLANs. <clears throat> okay, and then for the, um, for the VLAN 100, we already have that traffic flowing. Okay, so let's correct some of this configuration. So we're gonna do switch port range E00 and E10, not switch port range, interface range, switch port host and access VLAN is going to be 200. Next is interface range zero slash one. And one one. Switch for trunk to Q more trunk and last piece is the zero two and one two one fifty. Fifty, hundred. We have some trunks. 
Okay, so zero one and one one are my trunks. And I've also configured zero three here, obviously, because this is connecting here. That's a trunk. Okay, and this one three is a trunk as well. Okay. So I've not configured any IP addressing here. My router here is doing, again, the router on a stick for VLAN 200 and 100. Okay, and I've configured the appropriate uh, IP addresses, whatever it is, okay? Pretty straightforward CCNA based uh, config, okay? Just need to understand how the logical, uh, how the logical topology is, and then make sure you understand how the physical connectivity is being done. Okay, let's write that. Okay, now let's come back out and we're gonna configure our firewall now. So kick zero zero, this would be outside. Okay, now before I do this, I'll pre-configure my objects. Okay, so that I can use those objects again and again in my configuration. So let's come into objects first. Object management. And you would again see those network port objects and some additional ones as well. So you're gonna see, it's a much bigger list of objects on the FMC. So you can do AAA server, access list, pools, network, okay? Um, a lot of these are predefined. And same principle, you have op uh, groups, network, host, you have port-based, okay? Time range, time zone, a lot of, lot of different things. Okay. Let's just do network first. I'm gonna add a network object, okay? And this is going to be, let's say for default route, okay? Default route, so we'll be doing EIGRP again, like we did with FDM, okay? So let me just create one for default route. It's going to be a network, zero, 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 slash zero, save. Okay, we should already have that, but I wanted to create my own. Okay, let's create our network. So we have um, LAN 1110. Okay, which is 10.0.1.1.10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
150.0. And then I'm gonna also create one object, which is going to point directly to my DMG server, which is going to be at dot 100. DMZ server. I'm going to say real IP. Just say real host 172.16.150.100. And if you're going to notice, there's a public address that I've provided here as well. Okay, so that we can test some inbound traffic. So we'll create an object for that. It will help us when we'll configure the NAT. So I've configured DMZ server real. I'm gonna configure another one. I'm gonna say DMZ server public. And it's going to be host, so 4088, Our HQ Edge firewall here is going to be at 4088.200.1. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna configure that as well. Um, let's just do 254 for this. saying 254 because my firewalls are going to be dot one. And the secondary firewall is going to be dot two on all the interfaces, okay? So this is going to be 254 there. Say object. And I'm gonna say, um, HQ Edge Router Post 4088 200.254. Okay. <laughs> a lot of these objects for us so that it can, it will be helpful for us. Okay, um, you can do objects, sorry, groups as well, or you can use um, a CSV file to import if you have lots of objects that you want to uh, configure. So rather than doing it manually, uh, this is the format in which you can configure your CSV files. You can import that as well. Similarly, you have your ports. A lot of them are already provided to you, which is the more common ports that they are, or you have objects for them. They're system provided, you cannot delete them or modify them, okay? Next that I will do, um, I will do for uh, interface. And when I say interface, I'll configure the zones add and I'll add a security zone. And I'll create one, I'll say LAN trust. Okay, and you can choose an interface type. So there are lots of them. I'm gonna choose routed and I'll talk about a couple of them uh, later on. Do routed here. Okay, if you have not enabled any interface, on the firewall yet, they're all in shutdown state. That's why you don't see any interfaces. 
okay, which is okay. We're just trying to create the objects. We're gonna add one for our WAN or outside. Type would be routed. Okay, and I'm using the same names that I have uh, configured here. And I'll do one for DMZ as well. Now, since I'll be using sub interfaces, I should have created two different security zones. Okay, so we'll keep it that, and then I'll create a couple of more. Say LAN 110, trust. Let's copy this, save. One twenty. <clears throat> okay. I'll create a couple of more objects. Um, I'll create one for time zone because I want to set my firewalls to be in the proper time zone. Say IST, I'm gonna select our time zone here, plus 530. It's 530, uh, we do not follow daylight savings, so that's fine, we're gonna save it. Okay, and we'll be, we'll be making use of this. Um, what else, let me come back into network and let me just create a couple of, for our DNS as well. That object, let's say DNS one host, and it's gonna be 208, 67, triple two, triple two, copy this. Create for a second one. DNS two. Host is going to be two twenty two twenty. Okay, I'll add them to an object or a group. Select both of them, add and save. And let's just create an object for the port for DNS as well. I'll do for DNS and then also for HTTP. So we're gonna group. So DNS, TCP and UDP, save. Okay. 
group. I'm going to say web. And I'm going to add HTTP, HTTPS to it. Save. OK. So I really like to do this first. What are information I have for my IP addressing and everything? Um, what I really need to do? I first plan out the objects so that when I do the configuration, it gets much easier for me to just reuse the objects that I already created. So I don't have to go back and forth between policies and objects. You can create the objects from the policy itself wherever it's required, but I kind of like to plan it out first. Now let's go back into our devices device management and we can start configuring our firewall, all the IP address and everything. And we're gonna configure everything in one go, okay? Except for the policy, we're gonna keep the policy at the default, okay? Cover policy um, later on. But the basic setup, IP addressing, routing and everything, you're gonna set up first. So the interfaces. First, the gig zero zero. This is pointing to our WAN, to our internet. Okay, so we are gonna enable it. And I'm gonna say WAN, trust. And no need to change the mode. Okay, I'll explain these later on, but just keep it at none. Security zone, yes, we're gonna use our WAN and trust security zone that we already created. Okay, MTU priority, we're gonna keep it at the default. We're gonna come into IPv4 and we're gonna configure static IP address. It's going to be 4088.200.1. Okay, it's 4088.200.0 and our firewall is dot one. The other things that you can do as well, you can do IPv6, you can do path monitoring, okay, which is basically, um, mm -hmm. Your performance monitoring, so you can monitor jitter, RTT, packet loss, etc. Okay, you can set the duplex and speed. You can configure manager access. Okay, so if um, let's say you're trying to access the FMC through this interface, you can enable that as well. And there's some advanced things here. I'll talk about some of these, uh, okay? So from here, you can set up your ARP inspection, which I already discussed when we did ASA, okay? And you can enable some anti-spoofing fragment reassembly. Um, we'll discuss that. So right now, we're just setting up the basic IP addressing and everything. <clears throat> okay. Now, gig01, this is the insight. And this needs to be configured with SAW interfaces. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll enable that interface only. No IP addressing, nothing here. And I'm gonna come into add interfaces and I'm gonna add a SAW interface. I'm gonna say, LAN 110, security zone. We already created a security zone for LAN 110. This interface is a sub interface of 01. Okay. ID is, let's just give it 110. And it's going to process the 802.1Q tag of 110. Okay, so this is similar to configuring, or these steps are similar to configuring on the CLI gig 01.110 VLAN 110. Like we did on the AS. Now we can give it an IP address. And check this, uh, not really using SGT, so we can remove that. It's going to be 10, 0. 1110.1. Okay, 10, 0, 1, 1, 10, 0, firewall is always going to be dot one. Hit okay.
And we should now see a new sub interface that has been added. Similarly, we're going to add a second sub interface. Say LAN 120, the correct security zone. Let's select sub interface for the same interface, gig 01, 120, and I'll do 120 there as well. This ID is relevant, irrelevant. Okay, it can be anything. The VLAN is obviously need to be the VLAN tag. 10, 0, 120.1. Okay, that's my inside network there. 0, 02 is pointing to my DMZ. Come in here, I'm gonna call this DMC. Um, mode, no, security zone. IPv4, it's going to be 172.16.150.1. Okay, 172.16.150.1. Okay. And this last interface, this we are gonna use for our high availability. This is going to be that failover link, okay? So I'll enable this or let it be. We're gonna do this later on when we will uh, do the actual high availability. Okay, so this is done. If you look at the add interface, you have a couple of options. You've got sub interface, which we already did. You have redundant interface, okay? And I talked about this um, when we did ASA, so you can add Two interfaces to a. So I can add, let's say, these two interfaces to a redundant group. Okay, one remains active, another one remains on standby. That's a redundant interface. BVI or bridge group interface is for your transparent mode like we discussed with ASA. You then have VTI, the same thing that I discussed yesterday for VPN, okay? So different interface types that you have. On the FTM, we did not have any of these except for virtual tunnel interface. I'll save this. Next, we'll set up our routing. We'll enable EIGRP. Come down into EIGRP. We're gonna enable EIGRP. Autonomous system is going to be 100. Okay, where are the available network? Host, I wanna do any. Okay, this is a system provided, um, which basically is zero, 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 zero. Okay, just any network. And I wanna do passive interface for my DMZ and for my LAN. I only wanna exchange packets on this WAN link and nowhere else, okay? And I don't wanna have auto summarization, it's so not doing that. And then you can set up other attributes as well. You wanna do redistribution, you wanna do summarization, okay? You can do any interface data things, you wanna set up neighbors, you can do that, okay? You can set up a lot of different things. We're just setting up very basic EIGRP here. Okay, save this out. Now, if I would have wanted, I would have, or I could have properly 
done my networks, okay? Because I already have those objects. So I could have done that, right? And if you want, we can do that. So we can go ahead and we can advertise our DMZ. We also want to advertise our LAN network. And we also want to advertise our WAN network for which we did not create an object. So let's just do it. So you can create an object right from here. Plus icon, WAN net, network, it is 4088200.0. Okay. And if you create an object and it does not appear in here, you can uh, just do a refresh. And then you should be able to see the, okay. So this is a much better way of doing configuration, um, specifying being as specific as possible rather than doing uh, the all zeros in. Save it. Next, we'll enable DHCP, okay? Because you wanna provide IP addresses dynamically to my hosts or my clients, my end users. So come into DHCP. We are doing server. And at the bottom here, I'm gonna add a server and on the LAN 110 interface, right? So everywhere you're gonna be using those names that you have configured, just like ASA. Pool would be 10.0.110.100 to 10.0.110.101. Okay, not, I just have one host, so let's just do two IP addresses. Enable the DHCP server, hit okay. And we're gonna add the second one for the 120 as well. Enable it, okay. I can provide domain name and DNS. So DNS is obviously what I'll, I'll be providing. So for domain, let's just say ripperkings.com. And for DNS, I will be configured my objects. So DNS one here and DNS two here. Okay, and I'll save this. Okay, you can set up DNS DHCP relay as well, the firewall, but we're not doing DHCP relay, so we don't really need to do that. Okay. So we have configured IP addressing, enable routing, enable DHCP, right? My hosts will still not be able to access the internet because we don't have NAT. There's nothing configured by default, remember that. On the FMC, you have to configure everything from scratch. So let's add a simple path so that it allows the users to access the internet. If you come into devices, you have NAT. And in a lot of places on FMC, you're gonna see two options to create policies. You could either add firepower NAT policy or threat defense NAT policy. Anywhere you see firepower, this is going to be for legacy devices. And these are for your threat defense or FTD devices. Since you're using FTD, this is the policy that you will have to create. And I'm gonna say HQ, NAT, and this is applied directly to the device. So you can see that we have device we can add to policy. Hit save. So there, there's not even a policy configured, so it's going to create the policy, and then we can add our rules. And you can see it's already in those three sections, section one, section two, section three. 
Okay, so again, NAT is exactly the same like we have on ASA. I'm gonna create an auto NAT rule. It's going to be dynamic. And I'm gonna say source and destination could be anything. Okay, the translation. Source is going to be my LAN 120, and I'm going to translate it to the um, destination interface. Okay, so my destination interface um, any, let's just add WAN and trust to it. Okay, so my van, a van and trust object, or interface object or security zone is assigned to my interface. So that's how it will be able to do that path. Hit okay. And I'll create another one for my LAN 120 source. Okay, so this is only for my LAN 110. Same thing, auto not dynamic. This time it's going to be here. Nation. Choose LAN120. Interface. And okay. That's my NAT. We're going to come back. We're going to make some changes later on when we will do our DMZ server access as well. But for now, this is just to allow my internal users to have access to the internet. Okay, and you can see policy assignment. You can click on that and you can see which device is this policy applied to. Save. One last thing that we'll do is we'll, set, we'll configure those platform settings. We're gonna configure DNS, time sync, time zone, et cetera, for our firewall. Okay, so you do that through the platform settings or platform setting policy. So you can come into device here and it, it's not available under policies, okay? It's available in the device. We have platform settings. Again, you'll have two options, firepower or threat defense. You'd always do threat defense for FTD devices. Let's say HQ, I'll say platform. Assign it, this device. Again, this is being applied directly to the firewall. And here you'll see you have some options. Good number of options that you can set for your firewall device. You can enable ARP inspection, do banner, DNS, HP access, ICMP, SSH access, um, syslog, timeout, time zone, time synchronization, et cetera, okay? So we're gonna configure a couple of them. You're gonna add a banner. Okay, save this. We're gonna enable um, DNS. I mean, we can or there's actually no need for it because your um, your FMC is the one that's going to do a lot of things related to the DNS. Your hosts are going to do the DNS resolution. Okay, let's skip this. We're going to come down, choose time synchronization. Let's first go into time zone. We're going to make sure that our time zone is correct. We already created an object for this previously. Save the time zone on the on the firewall itself is useful if you want to create rules based upon time. Okay, maybe you want to allow access to social media only after hours or after office hours. Okay, so it's really important for the firewall to know what time it is so that it can actually activate those rules or policies. Let's come into time synchronization and 
we don't want to do the NTP from the management center. Okay, we want to do it from pool itself. Okay, and I could use an IP address if I'm using a domain name or a host name or an FQD, and then obviously the firewall needs to have DNS access as well. Okay, so for this, we're gonna set the DNS as well so that the firewall gets the ability to resolve pool.ntp and sync the NTP. Okay, all that. Coming to DNS, and I'm gonna enable DNS resolution. Okay, just, okay. And I want to enable it on the outside interface, which is my WAN and trust, because that's connecting to the internet. My DNS servers are on the internet as well. If it's in production, if you're using some internal DNS servers, then you could choose to resolve those internally or even in the DMZ. Okay, but in our case, our DNS is Cisco's umbrella, which are on the internet. So I'll resolve the DNS on the outside interface. And what else? DNS server group. Um, let's just so I'll add my DNS servers here. Just call open DNS. Domain is fine, add 0867, 222, okay? You can add multiple DNS servers by using comma. Okay, if you want, you can set the timers, retries, that's fine. I'll save it. Okay. Filter domains. Um, let's just use networking.com. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I'll hit save. That's all the settings that I want to configure in the um, platform. I didn't configure this as the default. Let's make it a default. Okay. Don't have that warning anymore. Save. Okay. Okay. So I've set banner, DNS, set time zone, time synchronization, everything properly. Um, you can enable ICMP, okay? If you want to allow pings to interface or not, okay, you can do that. You can allow SSH access. By default, there is nothing in here. And I might want to enable SSH, okay? So let's just do that. Let's add. And I want to enable SSH on Um, let's say we'll enable it on one of the internal interfaces. Okay, so we'll do on the 110 VLAN, or maybe let's do 120. Okay, just going to be this zone here. Hit okay. Okay, so we have enabled, or we are enabling SSH access on that interface, and for this network basically. It'll be useful because I'll show you a couple of databases on the CLI, okay? So that really is the initial configuration. There are lots of other things that you can do as well, but we will configure them as we go through the future. Now, the changes have not taken effect, okay? Because you need to deploy those changes to the firewall or you need to implement or do a commit. So if we come to deploy, okay, 
we can see that it lists a firewall and it says ready for deployment. Okay, let's just see some details about it. It's going to advanced deploy. And we can see what all changes we are doing. Okay, green is for something that has been added. Edited is in blue and anything that we deleted or removed, it will be in red. So we can see we are doing a whole bunch of things. We are configuring platform settings, banner. We can see what the banner will be. We are doing DNS settings. We are doing time zone. SH, and it also gives me who did the modification, the username. We are doing NAT. We have configured interfaces. We have configured routing. We have configured a basic uh, policy, enabled DHCP, and we have added a lot of objects. Okay, and you'll be able to see a list of all the objects that added. So we added this, and we also added some HTTP ports, etc. If you want, you can download this as a PDF as well. The changes, so you can keep a track of the changes if you want to, okay? And from here as well, you can see um, what all things are being edited out or changed, okay? A key thing to note with deployment is this icon here. It says inspect interruption, yes. If this is yes, it will basically mean that you should not do the deployment in production because it will cause a little bit of network outage. Okay, because the security engine will go through a restart. Okay, if you see this, Push the deployment um, off business hours. If you don't see this, then you can do the deployment in production hours. There'll be no harm. Okay. So made a whole bunch of changes. Let's select this and let's deploy it. You can add a comment if you want, notes. Okay, so here it'll give you a percentage as well, which we did not solve with FDM. If I come into the deployment section here, it will also show you how much time it's taken. Percentage, if I go into task here also, you should see policy deployment taking place. Okay, let's give it a couple of, um, it should uh, happen before two minutes. In the meantime, I'll just power on the PCs here. So we can um, we can get IP addressing, we can do some tests and everything, see if traffic is flowing or not. So we kind of did the complete setup for the firewall. We made so many different changes. So it's it's pretty fast in doing um, that deployment, that pushing out that policy, those changes to the firewall. Okay, and the more changes, like I said yesterday, the more changes that you do, it can take a little more time for the complete deployment to go through.
that's successful. Took almost three minutes. Okay, that's fine. And if you now come in to deploy, um, you should not see any more pending deployments. It basically says all devices are up to date. Let's open up one of our devices here. This is, this is a Linux device. The other one is a Windows device. Again, let's come in here. Okay. So we can see it has received an IP address, 120.100 in that VLAN 120. Come into settings here. Come into network, come in here. IP, the default gateway, and then DNS. Similarly, let's see if DHCP is enabled here. because I don't see it receiving an IP address. <clears throat> oh, it has received an IP address. <clears throat> okay, so IP has been received in 110. VLAN is correct. Default gateway, that's my DHCP server. Those are my DNS servers. Okay. From the firewall perspective, <clears throat> can do same commands that used to run on ASA. Show interface IP brief. <clears throat> we should see the interfaces have been configured now. to show NAT. Two statements that we created for auto NAT. 110.0 will be translated to the outside interface, 200.1. Similarly, 120.0 will be translated to 200.1. What else? Access list. There should be just a default one, okay? So you see a couple of things which are different than FDM. We see there is a pre-filter policy here, the default one. Okay, and it has some of these different rules in here. Okay, and then we have this access policy HQ.ACP that we created the default, and all that it has, it has a default action, which is basically saying permit IP any. That's all the policy has, nothing else, okay? Because we never really added any rules or anything to it. Okay. And if we come into our um, device here, if you go into analysis, this way you can see your logs. So connection, connection events. 
This is where you're going to spend a lot of time looking at uh, the different logs and everything. And right now, you won't see anything. Because again, recall, we had to enable logging. Okay, by default, there's no logging present. Okay, so since we do not have any logging enabled, even for the default action, you're not going to see any logs. Okay, that's the initial setup. <clears throat> okay, we'll continue with this next week. Uh, we'll go over into the packet flow and how to set up the access control policy. And we'll look at some of the other, um, other policies here um, as well. Okay, uh, any question? Not really sure if you guys are going through the labs and everything because I don't see anyone asking any questions. I mean, either during the class or after the class uh, during the week. So if you're not doing it, do it. We are kind of like what, two months into the training. Um, once we finish this, we go into VPN and ICE. Um, nothing is gonna make sense. Okay, so let me just tell you that. So if you're not doing the labs, not reviewing the videos and everything, not coming up with any questions, uh, then it's probably high time that you start doing it. Okay, just a suggestion. So if uh, there are no more questions, I think we can end it for today. Okay, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, have a good rest of the week. Thank you, bye-bye.